Hey everyone, it's Logan from SWCPL. And I'm Kara, his assistant. And today we are going to be making catapults for our third week of summer reading. Can you believe it's already the third week? This is just flying by. So if you had the chance to pick up your kit from the library, we'll go through what's inside. And if you didn't have a chance to stop by and get one, you can maybe find these things around the house. So the first thing in the bag is a plastic spoon. And then we have a pom-pom. We have two rubber bands. And we have six popsicle sticks. So for your popsicle sticks, you're going to want to divide them into two groups. One group of two and one group of four. You're going to set those separately to the side. So for the first step on our paper, we are going to take those two popsicle sticks and rubber band them together. So if you have smaller rubber bands, if you're grab grabbing stuff from at home, you want to use probably smaller ones, but if you have longer rubber bands, that's totally fine too. You just have to spin it around more times. So you've got those together just like that. Then you're going to take your four popsicle sticks and make a nice straight stack. Try to get them all lined up as much as you can. And you're going to put them in between your two popsicle sticks. So you can do this either by sliding them apart to make a V and sticking them in that way, or you can pull them apart kind of like alligator teeth. Just be really careful not to snap them. So once you have those four popsicle sticks in between the two, you are going to crisscross your other rubber band to get them all to stay in place. So when it gets done, you're going to want it to have kind of an X on top so you know that everything's in there snugly. So your fourth step is to take that plastic spoon, and if you're at home, you can use a metal spoon too. It'll work just fine. And you're going to slide that in through your top rubber band just like Kara did. Great job. Then you have a catapult. That was easy, right? But you're going to have a lot of fun with this. So we've supplied you with a pom-pom. So to get started, you're going to just put that pom-pom in there. You're going to hold your catapult firm to the table so it doesn't fly. And then you just pull back and let her go. Just like that. So once you've done that and you've practiced a few times, you could get some stuff around the house um, to practice aiming at. Like, don't practice aiming at your parents' faces or your dog or your cat or anything like that. We don't want you to get in trouble. But maybe you could build a Lego castle and you could try aiming at that. Or you could try putting, stacking some paper cups or something like that and flinging your pom-pom at that to see if it does anything. And then you could also try swapping out that pom-pom for something else around the house. Now, once again, we wouldn't suggest anything that's gonna cause damage and get you into trouble. So don't go grab a rock from outside or anything like that. But you could maybe try a ping pong ball or maybe a little piece of a sponge. And if you line those all up and shoot them one at a time from your catapult, I would love to know what object went the furthest when you shot it from the catapult. So like always, be sure to take pictures and show us if you come into the library. We would love to see you guys enjoying these at home. And stay tuned for some book recommendations to go along with the, the activity today. Thanks. Bye. All right, so I hope you guys really enjoyed making those catapults. And like I said, we would love to see pictures of those. And if you decide you have some grand idea for an even cooler catapult than what you made with those, we would love to see those pictures as well. So when I think about catapults, I think about castles. And when I think about castles, I always think about fantasy books. And you know, all the princes and princesses and those battles between good and evil, and maybe there's some magic or some dragons thrown in the mix. So I wanted to recommend a couple of fantasy series to you that are two that I've read the whole series and I just love them. The first one is The Young Elite by Marie Lu. And this one is about Adelina, who survived what was called the blood fever, but left her marked up. And 
The name for the people who have survived that is Malfesto. And a lot of these people have some magical powers, but the government in the story doesn't like that. So this is a story of Adelina as she discovers and comes to term with her terms with her powers. Um, but the interesting twist is that Adelina isn't necessarily the character that you're always rooting for in the story. She has had a really, really rough life and she has a lot of anger. And so if you remember the Star Wars prequels where we learned about how Anakin turned into Darth Vader, so how he started out pretty good and then became the villain, that's kind of the journey that we get to follow Adelina on in these stories. So I loved them and I think you'll like them too. The other series that I wanted to recommend to you is Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. And this is the story of Zele, and it's very similar to the other one in that there are a group of people who have magical powers and the people who have the political power don't like that. So in this case, everyone who had magic has been killed. But Zele discovers that she has some magical powers kind of hidden deep down inside of her. And so this is the story of her running from the prince who's hunting her, trying to kill her and coming to terms with her own magic so that she can bring magic back to Orisha, which is the, the fictional country that she lives in in this book. So I hope you will come into the library and check out those two series, Children of Blood and Bone and The Young Elites. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great day. Bye.